To be honest, I don't know how to respond. Come on, man. You work with this guy. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Splash. Today, we'll be talking about five worst purchases on Pawn Stars. For five, 1915 Ford Model T Custom Woody Sedan. The Ford Model T is, of course, one of the most famous cars ever made. This Model T taxi that came into Pawn Stars was inspected by expert Danny Coker, who gave the car a glowing review and estimated its value at $29,000. The Pawn Star team bought it for $21,000. The frame appeared to be original, but it had a four-cylinder Chevy engine in it, a modern turnkey ignition switch, and an AM-FM CD player built in. Coker proved it to be spot on, as the car sold for $29,700 at the Barrett-Jackson auction in 2011. But keep in mind that the buyer paid $29,700, while the sales price was $25,826, and the seller got $23,760 after commissions, which leaves a profit of just $2,760. And that's before you take into consideration storage, transportation, transfer, taxes, and fix-up costs. Number 4. 1969 Chevrolet Camaro Z28. This car was bought by Corey Harrison, the son of Rick. It's a cool piece of nostalgia and a collector's item, but as reflected in the episode in which he bought the car, it is clearly a purchase made by someone with ample disposable income. It was not a practical buy, but rather a buy he made because he really wanted to personally own the car. It was bought for $40,000 and eventually put on sale at various venues for prices of $50,000, $65,000, and even $100,000. But it never sold. Unfortunately, Haggerty values the car at just $36,000, making this quite a terrible purchase. Number 4. The Shoeless Joe Jackson Autograph I have a book signed by Shoeless Joe Jackson. Oh, it's actually signed by him. Right. In this season six episode, Say It Ain't So, Rick made another ill-fated gamble without consulting his trustworthy experts, shelling out $13,000 on a book he believed might contain the authentic signature of baseball great Shoeless Joe Jackson. Rick couldn't have been more excited during the appraisal, saying this is absolutely incredible and speculating that it might be the rarest sports signature, period, because Jackson was illiterate. But despite the seller's questionable certificate of authenticity and Rick's own reservations, as he admitted, of all of the sports signatures in the world, this is the one most faked. But he bought it anyway. After hearing Rebecca, his book expert, say that the signature was likely a fake, Rick then sent out to another authenticator who reiterated the bad news. Not only was it a forgery, but it was a laughably bad one. Number 2. Wells Fargo Strongbox here. Well, we got a Wells Fargo strong box and some antique ball and chain. I've had a ball and chain for 50 some years, son. <laughs> Don't talk about my mother that way. <laughs> In a fifth season episode called Corey's Big Play, Rick made the unusual mistake of buying something he was unsure of before he had it authenticated. He dropped $450 on what he believed to be a 19th century Wells Fargo strongbox, only to have his hopes of a profit shot down by expert and show regular Mark the Beard of Knowledge, Hall Patton, who called the box a complete fantasy piece. Hall Patton twisted the knife a little more, saying it's one of the most faked items out there. The seller also bought the box and stuffed with a two ball and chain set he thought were artifacts from the Yuma and Folsom prisons. But Rick recognized them as fakes anyway, meaning Rick definitely should have sent something wasn't right with the box. The old man who observed the whole transaction wasted no time rubbing it in, telling Rick, I thought it was fake to start with, but he let the deal go through just to have something to hang over Rick's head. Number 1. 2014 Ford Mustang Hertz Penske GT so this is it, huh? Uh, this is it. That's right. It's a uh, 2014 Hertz Penske GT. This is nice. One of the most expensive car purchases on Pawnsters came from this limited edition 2014 Ford Mustang Hertz Penske GT, of which only 150 were ever made. It came when Hertz Rent a Racer program was a partnership with Roger Penske. This was also one of the first 10 built with a six-speed manual transmission and had never been rented so it was in pristine condition. 
The seller asked for $85,000 and got $60,000, which as it turned out was too much. Even though Rick's car expert valued the car at $75,000, despite its rarity, Rick had problems selling it for a long time and many fans believe he over- Well everyone, hope you enjoyed. While you're here, go ahead and click the link to check out some of our other awesome videos. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this. See ya in the next video.